I don't know about you, but with my busy life, I have a personal discipline at the end of every year. I reflect on what have been some of the highlights. And it's interesting because many, most of my highlights from last year had nothing to do with any professional success. And one of the highlights was merchandising for you. And in December of 2010, I went to New York to see you perform at the World Financial Center. Because uh, Tom Redmond, <laughs> a road warrior and merchandiser of King Crimson and your bodyguard for that day. We went to hear your, your, really your final performing in public. These were my final performances as a professional musician, December the 3rd and the 4th at the World Financial Center. I played there first of all in 1998, then again in 2000, and then in 2010. And in 2010, across the roadway was Grain Zero. And the World Financial Center uh, was a site to the war dead. And people would come to pay their respects and look over the road. And these were my final performances. And on December the 5th, 2010, I flew home to England, my wife and Willie Fred the Rabbit, looking forward never ever to playing in public again. Well, our friends now know that last year Tom Redmond and I were merchandising for King Crimson and Joe Venito and, and Steve Shapiro were with me when we went to see you in Boston. So what happened? How come you abandoned the music business and you were now back with a brand new lineup of King Crimson? In 2012, six years of dispute and wrangling with the Universal Music Group came to an end. This ending 21 years of ongoing dispute and litigation, stemming back to my former managers in 1991, <laughs> <laughs> who set a course of action in motion that took 21 years of dispute to bring to an end. That went away. Secondly, there I was at our home with my lovely wife and Willie fed our rabbit, and I was happy. I became happy as a condition for the first time in my life around March 2011. Paradise. Paradise is wonderful. Paradise is to be earned. However, much as paradise is a wonderful place to live, nothing happens. <laughs> in other words, there is an edge of reality and necessity that is missing. Thirdly, my wife said to me, you are not dull, but you are in danger of becoming dull. <laughs> Willie Fred the rabbit said nothing. <laughs> Fourth, whenever King Crimson, whenever music appears that only King Crimson can play, Sooner or later, King Crimson appears to play the music. And fifth, on the 22nd of July, 2013, with my wife and two friends, John and Richard of Angel Eye Productions, in at the end of their garden in Vauxhall, South London, at approximately 4.15 in the afternoon, the people in the building next door began cheering. Ten minutes later, the news went public. Prince George has been born. A new, the future King of England has been born. Now, the family next door got the phone call ten minutes earlier. They must have been part of the family. Now, there we were, Richard and John and my wife talking, and I began to hold this question and look at it. 
If King Crimson were to perform tomorrow, what would King Crimson be? And as I looked at it, I saw the conventional back line, which is the drummers, the rhythm section, in the front line, and three of them. And then what is conventionally the front line, saxophone, guitar, singer, in the back line on a riser. And I saw each of the people that the drummers and the players would be. And I looked at this, and it stuck with me. It continued to resonate. So I saw this was possible, but I wasn't sure that I wished to take it on again. Then a month later, I made the calls. I called each of the other six men. If any one of them had said no, that would have been it. Each one of them said yes. And so, King Crimson had a year to get ready for rehearsing and then going on the road, which it began last year at Albany. And with that, dear sweet brother, as we brought up the idea of merchandising, just... No, you <laughs> brought up the idea of merchandising. <laughs> okay. All we would invite our friends to do, if they have any interest in taking some of your spoken word CDs and a collection of King Crimson music, certainly Patricia Lordejang in the audience would love to relieve them of some of their cash. And we ask everyone to talk to them ab about FRIP virtual training, which is the way you get someone 85 rungs above you to help you with your presentations. And with that, brother, what is your concluding one line? There are a number of one lines. <laughs> <laughs> and this one line in strange and uncertain times, such as we're living through. Sometimes a reasonable person might despair, but hope is unreasonable, and love is greater even than this. May we trust the inexpressible benevolence of the creative impulse. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Frisch.